Well, USFL week two. My goodness. My goodness, what a week in the USFL. We had a. No, I'm just playing with y'all. That was one of the worst games I think I've watched in quite a long time on Friday night. But Saturday, beautiful. Sunday, not so much. Uh, it wasn't beautiful for one team, but it was beautiful for another. We'll talk all about that in a moment. But I just want to get like some quick thoughts about the league in general out the way. We got a three-point conversion for the first time, um, which is absolutely fantastic. That's one of the things the U.S. Phil has been priding itself on. You know, the whole three-point conversion thing, they got it. They, the team got one this week. I forgot which one. I think it was uh, I think it was Philadelphia, or, or, or was it Pittsburgh? I think it was Philadelphia that got it. Uh, uh, I can't remember exactly because, I mean, sat again, Saturday is, Saturday's games were too good. They were too good. Uh, the new kicking balls, did they help? No. No, no, they did not. <laughs> Uh, you can check the hashtag on Twitter, hashtag USL Kickers, and you'll see me talking about why that did not help. Block kicks, miss kicks, you know, the special kicking balls, they didn't help. You know, it looks a little bit better on paper, but it's still, you know, a lot of missed kicks. It, it just is what it is. And yes, even the USFL will get bumped for baseball. They got bumped for their, uh, the game Saturday night got bumped for like a whole hour to FS2, you know. So rain delays last week, you know, pushed the games back, which again, people, I don't, I don't understand why people don't seem to look for things. You know, the USFL tweet, you know, the USFL tweets about these things, you know, they're going to tweet about their schedule and stuff like that. You know, let y'all know. You know, people are like, oh, well, the USFL, there was like this one person on Twitter who was like, oh, well, they, they pushed the game back. And it's like, yo, the USFL tweeted, hey, the game is going to start this time. You know, now, you, you know, you, you need to stop playing about, like, you know, Law and Order being on because, you know, the game got pushed back. Again, it was rain last week. This week, baseball. This week it was baseball that, you know, messed up a USFL game. But it was all good. It was all good. It was all good. So why don't we get into Friday night? Friday night, again, one of the roughest games I think I've ever seen in my entire life. You got Shea Patterson just not looking good out there. I'm sorry. This Michigan O-line got bullied by New Jersey all night. You know, Luis Perez, DeAndre Johnson, you know, and the Generals, they were efficient enough, you know, in this game, at least in the first half, because, like, after the first quarter and a half, there was no scoring for 30-plus minutes. That, that, that's kind of bad. That, that, that's, that's not good. A defensive slugfest in which no points were scored in the second half. What is this, the Big Ten? It certainly has two teams in the Big Ten footprint. This game was terrible. I'm sorry. You know, New Jersey got the win, but unfortunately, the game was absolutely atrocious. 10-6, atrocious, atrocious game for, you know, for these um, for these Panthers, it was, it was just bad. It's just bad. I'm sorry. You know, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, New Jersey's got to win. Michigan has none. So, you know, it is what it is. And you know, now you know Michigan's gonna have to go up. You know, take on Pittsburgh next week, which is gonna be real intriguing. Because again, uh, I'm not high on either of these two teams. So. Uh, we will see. We will see how that goes. New Jersey, on the other hand, they'll be taking on Philadelphia. And speaking of Philadelphia, let's move into Saturday. Uh, again, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia. The and I don't know why they were calling this rivalry week. Uh, this is really a rivalries, you know, in this league yet. No, nobody, nobody's calling, you know, what was it like the breaker? Bay brawl. Nobody's calling it that. It's just the game, bro. USFL tries so hard. To make rivalries that, that that don't really exist at, at this point in time, but in, in any case, um, Pittsburgh Philadelphia again. Josh Love threw a pick six early in the game. One of the game sealers was by Channing Stripling. The other game sealing interception. You know Philadelphia was on point. They played they played a damn good game. Pittsburgh played pretty well too. Again, Josh Love threw two touchdowns. Um, 
but Brian Scott, man, threw for three, ran for another. That that's what you like to see right there. And again, you know, the three pointer, you know, that that was crazy. You know, finally got one, and you know, Pitt, Pittsburgh now they're over to Philadelphia. It's got some good momentum going. Now they're one and one. You know, things are looking interesting now. You know, for for the stars, you know. Ryan Scott's looking, you know, nice. The, the the game for these guys are looking nice. You know, everything's looking pretty nice for Philadelphia right now. Pittsburgh on the other hand, I'm still kind of skeptical. It's either Denver, Michigan right now for me. That's like the two of the worst teams in the league. I'm sorry, just is what it is. And then you go to the late game on Saturday again. This got bumped the FS2 for like. 40 to 45 minutes, and Jamar Smith with the longest completion in USFL, you know, history, at least in this iteration so far. Marlon Williams was a big help to this man. I swear he was all over the field for the Stallions. Lorenzo Burns with a nice icer, uh, a nice ice pick, you know, at the end of the game. Clayton Thorson, he was all right. It was just the receivers were not catching, you know, the passes. Like, there there was some tipped interceptions in this game. You know, I don't know if it was like, you know, the D linemen were able to get up over and get up over all these old linemen or anything like that. And it, it, just, it just ended up being, you know, it, a lot of tipped interceptions in this game. And then New Orleans, Tampa Bay, which just finished up. Uh, Jordan Tomu and the O-line dominated by the breakers, you know, the Tampa Bay Bandits, a lot of people were picking them to, you know, I think I, even I was like, yo, breaker, uh, the, the Bandits, they got, they got something good here, but they got whipped, they, they, got, they lost by 31 points in this game, Brady White had to come in, you know, at times, but he didn't do anything, like, you know, Tampa Bay only had one scoring possession, they could never get any momentum going, every time they tried to get some momentum going, like, Stopped. Stopped on fourth down. Stopped on third down and long, you know, to have to punt it away or turn it over. You know, this New Orleans defense, they ain't no joke. They are no joke at all. They've only allowed, you know, they've only allowed, you know, a, a grand total of 20 points so far. But they, they, you know, they, they were able to keep Philadelphia on edge for most of that game last week, and they just never let up against Tampa Bay at all. You know, Kyle Slaughter, man, real efficient, real efficient in this game. You know, there there were some iffy passes here and there, but he was real efficient. The real star of the show here was Jonathan Adams Jr., though, with some ridiculous catches in this game. A couple, one, one he got for a touchdown, the other was just a ridiculous catch with one hand. And New Orleans, 2-0. Tampa Bay, not 2-0. So, you know, the, the USFL moving into week three, we got a doubleheader Saturday, a doubleheader Sunday. It, it's going to be it's gonna be real beautiful. It's going to be real beautiful to see how everything shapes up, you know, for the USFL next weekend. So, in any case, I'll see you all on Friday to talk, you know, week three of the USFL, previewing week three of the USFL. And until then... I'll see you all later. Take care. And actually, though, no, I'll see you in like 20 to 25 minutes or so. Maybe like an hour. <laughs> this weekend indoor football is coming soon. <laughs>